Hey everybody, hope you're all doing fantastic as usual. In today's video, I'm going to be updating you on my isopod cultures. It's been a few months now since I received that European import and the isopods are doing quite well. If you didn't have a chance to watch that unboxing video and you want to see all the isopods arrive, click the link up above to watch that video. So I thought, what better video to do now than to show you guys a bit of an update. I'm starting to find babies or mankai in every single species bins except for one, but I'll update you all on that now. Without further ado, let's take a look at all my isopod cultures. So as I always do with videos that contain smaller subjects, I'm going to be filming this with a combination of my Canon G7X Mark II and my Sony camcorder that's nearly a decade old because that camera is really good at getting small subjects in focus. So you'll see it kind of go back and forth in quality. I hope you don't mind, but this camera, although great, is not capable of filming uh, filming those subjects up close. So these are some smaller cultures here. These are the giant orange isopods. They are orange porcilio scaber. And this is a small culture I picked up at the Abbotsford BC Expo. These guys, I think there were maybe 10 of them, and a few um, youngsters uh, were doing really well, and they are breeding quite nicely. If you look in here closely, you'll see lots of, well, there's actually a baby, but everything else moving here are springtails. So, let's gently move through and see if we can find an adult animal for you all to see. So this here is one of the adult animals, lovely Porcilio scaber orange morph. And I'll switch over to the other camera to give you guys a more focused look on it. So right away you can see the huge difference here, right? But yeah, this is the orange P scaber. It's a gorgeous isopod. Just look at that detail. Beautiful. Let's see if we can find some Mankai to film in here. I did just see one here. There we go. So that's a baby. There's another one. So they are quite prolific and these ones are breeding quite readily. And again, let's not make a mistake here. These are springtails. But the larger ones in there that we're moving through here like that little guy where'd he go? that is an isopod, the ones around him are springtails okay friend you can go home now you're okay there you go Beautiful. Let's move on to the next species in a smaller culture bin. Next up we have the Nagaris cristatus, which are known as the dwarf gray isopods. So we'll take a look here and see how they're doing. Now this is a very small species of isopod, so they certainly are not going to be as easy to find in here. So it took some digging around, but here is one of the Mankai for the Nagaris Cristatus. It's just cruising along. And there's an adult over here. Just kind of chilling. They're very nice little dwarf species. Oh, oh, poor guy, there we go, see ya. So they too have been breeding slowly and doing pretty good. Next up we're going to check the Atlantosia floridanus. These guys like to be pretty wet most of the time. Uh, there's a ton of springtails in this enclosure, as you can see. It's kind of intense. They're really thriving in here. 
And these isopods are pretty fast, so hopefully we'll catch a glimpse of them before they all run away. Let's see if I can turn this slowly. Ah! No, come back. So, here is one. I don't know if you see that, it keeps running away. Just want a nice little video of you guys. There we go. These are neat species, you know? They sort of behave like a more aquatic isopod. And I mean, to some degree. Yeah, they do need quite a bit of moisture. But yeah, they are in fact terrestrial. Very cool. So we'll gently put these guys back as well. Next we have the dwarf purple isopods. I forget the Latin name for these, but I will try to look it up and post it in the clip. Um, but here are these ones. They're very tiny as well. Let's see if we can get a glimpse of any of them. Now this is just a little culture. There aren't very many in here, so it's going to take a while for them to establish themselves. There's one. Don't hide. Come back. <laughs> Gives you some idea of what they're like. It was a very quick glimpse, but alas, they're doing well too. And that's just some live moss I threw in there um, to help feed them. And some leaf litter. Okay. So that's four species. Let's move on to the next. So now we're moving on to larger bins, and this here is a bin of local lads. So these are all local species of isopods that were collected outside in the yard. And they are doing very, very well. There are so many mankai in here. Um, you can see them all running around. Lots of different species too. There are some armadillidium species, there's porcilio species. Lots of different isopods in here doing well, eating lots of um, decaying wood, moss, and leaf litter. So, there you go. Here's a big group of them. Lots of variability, too. I might try to start isolating some groups here. See what we can do with these guys. Beautiful. And there you can see an armadillo DM. Get the lighter color on this one. Neat. All right, perfect. On to the next bin. One of the species I got from that European import was Porcilio bolivari. And this species of isopod has been probably the most difficult for me to culture. I'm really struggling to keep them alive in all honesty. I think I started with maybe 15 and I might have around 10, between eight and 10 left. Um, the ones I have left seem to be doing really well now, but they were very hard in the beginning to get, um, to just have thrive. They're so beautiful, and I really enjoy the species and their appearance. Like, they just look incredible, as you can see. But I don't think I'm planning on getting more until I can keep these ones going well. It's, it's unusual. A lot of people say to treat them like other Spanish species like Porcilio magnificus or Porcilio hoffmanseggi and they just I keep them the same way and these won't thrive and while well, you'll see in a bit those species are doing so well so I don't know what it is exactly and this is the only species that has yet to breed for me also so I'm hoping that things are gonna go well for them soon and that they'll thrive I haven't had a loss in quite a while but I did have several randomly die. I even had females carrying mankai pass away. I don't know what happened. It was just terrible. But nonetheless, these are my Porcilio Bolivari. And they are doing okay right now. I just want to be very honest that for a while they weren't. There's the screen lid over their main hide for the highest amount of ventilation. And then the humid side gets less ventilation so it stays humid longer. Awesome. 
it, I think it makes the most sense then rather than go back and use this camera between shots I'll just stick to the camcorder since and get the most close-ups this way so these here are the armadillidium nasatum peaches so these are the peach variety this color morph is quite beautiful um, there should be quite a few individuals in here I can show you they're breeding a lot more so as you can see here they are they're not gray they're a nice peach coloration they're very cute I started with I think a culture of maybe 10 to 20 animals from Phil Ramos the green oasis and they've been breeding really steady for me since and there's their moist area there's some cuttlefish bone and decaying wood moss they're doing great the next isopods on the list here are possible porcilio scaber they are a white it's like they're I think they're a koi porcilio scaber so it's like they're really supposed to be orange but they're mostly white so you can see this one has little flecks of orange on it but overall its body is white then again we have loads of little springtails in there now these I didn't get too many of but they are breeding as you can see so I guess uh, we'll find out and see how they continue to progress it's interesting though because most of the ones that I have have very limited orange on them at all this one I think is the one that has the most orange on it so you can see that there it's very very cool very cool animal awesome the next species we're going to be looking at are some giants these here are my Porcilio Hoffman Segi and they are rather large species now I started out with a pretty small group of these but several females have already produced quite a few mankai um, this here is the dry side and usually there are a few hanging out under here I see we have a larger male there there's another one and they're pretty big these aren't even full grown they, they don't have to be full grown to breed and then on the opposite side is where I've seen a lot of the females hang out oh there's a male with the mankai and so these have these were born and have grown to this size since September, mind you. So, check that out. These guys are doing really great. I'm so happy that they're thriving. So again, it's it's unusual that the Porcilio Bolivari were doing so poorly because these are all doing incredible. And there are a few other females that appear to be gravid right now. So, they're doing great. Now, one problem I do have, and you're going to see them in there, is unfortunately I have grain mites in some of my cultures, and they're a huge pesky nuisance. Yeah, they're on a little bit of that fish. That doesn't help. There's just some dried fish. Um, but yeah, grain mites, they're really annoying. Right now, they seem to be posing no threat to the isopods. They're... There aren't that many of them, and I can't really dry it out enough in here that they'll die away because that'll also kill the isopods. I've been considering purchasing some predatory mites to come in here and kill them off, but I am slightly concerned that they might harm my mankai. I do read that they will kill and eat springtails, which also kind of sucks because I do love that all my enclosures are stocked with springtails to keep down mold. It's something I'm trying to decide right now, but I haven't seen them cause any harm to the isopod so for now I'm not too worried about it it's just gross to have little grain mites crawling around everywhere all right let's go on to the next species next here we have the armadillidium klugi montenegros now these guys took a while to kick in a gear uh, they're doing very well I'm not sure if most of them were juveniles when I got them but I didn't find any mankind here for the longest time and I still don't find many but they are breeding. There are some 
youngsters in here and they're very beautiful and colorful species of isopod as you can see I really like them they're characterized by the yellow and white and dark body with the gorgeous red coloration as well so let's see if we can find ourselves mankai here uh, there usually are a few under here here we go look at them already at that tiny oops what are you guys doing don't jump already at that tiny size they have that beautiful coloration well that one's quite red that one's like super red that's red it's like almost reduced dark color and just red very neat I've noticed I placed some lichen in here and they are liking it. How do you like that for a joke? Lichen the lichen? Give me a thumbs up for that if you want. <laughs> but yeah, these guys are doing very, very well. But yeah, these guys are doing fantastic. Okay. And let me know guys, I was thinking of doing a care video at some point, if you would like to see some care videos on the isopods, I'd be more than happy to try them and do species specific ones. Most of their care is pretty generic, but at least depending on the locality, but I could do a how to care for isopod videos. There are a few out there and some I really like and appreciate that have helped me with mine even. But if you want to see me do a video like that where it's not just showing you the isopods but actually teaching you how to care for them, how to collect um, different leaf litters, um, food and create substrates to keep them on, let me know in the comment section down below. Just say uh, I'd love to see the tutorial video and if, that's, if I get enough people asking for it I'll definitely consider doing that. But for now this is a nice update to tell you how they're all doing. Next we have the Armadillidium maculatum, which are these zebra isopods. Now this is a very cool culture that's been doing quite well. Also, these isopods are also originally from Phil Ramos of the Green Oasis. Um, now, what's cool about this culture is I've already noticed two different genetic variations. In this culture, we have a few maculatum that are not only just these standard zebra striping, so here's a bunch of mankai of the normal zebras, but we have these blotchy ones. I think I saw one in here a second ago. And that's sort of one right there, you see? It's not just a clean striping, it, it has reduced dark pattern and more white striping and coloration. I know that when I get under that piece of cork, that's where we're going to see most of the adults. So this side is a lot moister, and I find a lot more mankai are hanging out here, and then this side's a lot drier, and the adults tend to hang out under here. So we also have some chocolate zebras under here, and they're more of a brown coloration. And that morph seems to be popping up in the new generation. So let's quickly lift this and see what we can spot. So right away you can see them all running here we have one of the chocolates you can see that they're lighter colored so some of them are dark these are the true zebras right and then in the new generation there are a few that are popping up like that so you can see the difference there's a lot more white so this is what the normal color would be and then you have the increased blotching and then here we have a ch chocolate zebra. So that's one that has the brown coloration instead of the darker black colored for the base of the body. Really, you know, they're not one of the rarest by any means, but they certainly are a favorite. They're just so cool looking. They're very beautiful. That that contrast just looks so cool. Very shiny. They almost look like little beetles. Like when you look at those guys with the color contrast, it's just, it's adorable. They're sweet little animals for sure. I don't know if I'm crazy, but maybe some of you would agree with me. See you later.
Next up on my list, we have the Porcilio Magnificus, which are another beautiful species from Spain. These guys are doing so well. Honestly, I, I'm blown away. They're extremely prolific, which is a bit odd because I've heard that normally they don't breed so often, uh, just a few times a year, but I don't know. I got a few of them, and there's like a massive group of them. I actually... I'm really going to need to rehouse these very soon because there are quite a few in here. So you can see some babies eating cabbage there. Um, look at all of them. So I can't say for sure, but I think they go darker right before molt because you can see there's some lighter ones in there. But yeah, there are a lot of young in here. And that's just an acorn. <laughs> that's sprouted but they eat it so kind of add some variety to their diet but do you see what I'm talking about there are a lot of these animals in here out of all the species I've recently obtained none have been as prolific as these guys I think they're even getting close to tying up with the uh, Porcilio Levis dairy cows that I have that you'll see soon there are quite a few isopods in those containers. Hi. Hi guys. Oh, they're so cute. Look at the little ones. Ho ho ho. Hi. These are a lovely large size species. Yeah, so there you go. Now you've seen the Porcilio Magnificus. Next we have the Porcilio scaber lavas. These are another very cool form of Porcilio scaber. Now what I like about these is that there's so much color variation between them. And I'm really hoping to split some up based on their colors. So what I want to do now is isolate the very vibrant ones from this group. Most of them are going to be under this piece of wood in the dryer area so I'm going to show you in a minute the very orangey red ones and I'm going to be planning to isolate those specific ones. Look at those guys. There's some really nice reddish orange ones like this one is just really cool. So I want to isolate all those guys from the group and try to start a colony that is just just the more reddish orange ones. But they're doing really well too. There's some nice like calico -y ones in there too. But look at that. It's a very cool looking animal. All right, let's go ahead and put these guys back to you now. Next we have my Porcilio Levis dairy cows. These are a beautiful species. The Porcilio Levis has quite a few different forms as the milk back, the solid white, the dairy cow, the orange. And stay tuned, I have a pretty large order of isopods coming in next month. I'm really excited for you guys to be seeing what I'll be receiving. There are over 15 species coming in on that import. It's going to be super cool. Here you have some Porcilio Levis dairy cows. And they are a must-have in any collection. Look at that large animal. They get to be a pretty decent size. They're a good sized isopod and they're very prolific. Hello little baby. Oh my gosh, look at that thing. It's so small. They have the spotting right away. Some they, they they're really they're just born with that spotting. So you can imagine the white form just looks like that with no black markings, which is also super cool. I don't want to give too much away, but I'm just going to tell you guys this much. I'm getting the orange form Lavis, so it'll be like this, but solid orange, and the solid white form, and I'm hoping that I can maybe produce some koi or try and make some interesting morphs, but I won't tell you more than that about what's coming in. 
yeah there's quite a few in here as you can see there are so many isopods in this culture oh man this all originated from one culture from Philromosis stock as well and he has some great animals all right see you later Next up we have my Porcilio Expansis. Now these are the normal classic ones. They're still pretty rare, but I am desperately trying to get my hands on some of the orange Expansis. I, it's got to be one of my favorite looking isopods. I would love to culture them. Here you have one though. They are still stunning, the white ones. Now these guys like it a lot drier. Uh, this one is funny enough on the more moist side but overall I keep these probably more dry than most of my isopod species uh, and they're yeah they're usually pretty calm they're sort of a species that stays very stationary until the last second when you, you move around or do something and then they just bolt but yeah um, I have about eight of them in here I was able to get a very small culture of them from Europe and, okay, fine, I said I wouldn't share more. I am getting some more just to add to the colony. So here are a few more. You can see a male there with a nice tail. And these are not full grown yet, but two of them do have mankai. I saw them, they're carrying mankai. So I'm very excited that they are thriving and will be producing some young very soon. And they do like a lot of decaying wood in their enclosure. They feed on that. I do give them some fish food and cabbage as well. But yeah, they need that decaying wood as well, which is really important for them. Oftentimes I'll find them under the wood eating. Beautiful. Let's move on to one of my favorite species. All right, everyone. So the last species I'm going to show you in this video are my Porcilio spatulatus. They are such a cool isopod, and they seem to be pretty uncommon overall. Look at those gems. They look so cool. I really, really like this species. I'm very grateful that they are really thriving for me. I have quite a few mankai in this enclosure that I've spotted. Uh, they appear to be rather prolific, or at least for me. So... I'm happy that they're doing so well. You can see again more mankai, a bunch under here. Yeah, they're they're really just doing great. It took them a little while to kind of kick in a gear, but I've added lots of decaying wood to the enclosure, uh, leaf litter. They really do love their leaf litter. Hi, little baby. How are you? How are you? Yeah, as I was saying, they do love their leaf litter. You can always see them breaking it down like that, and munching away at night. They're eating some Asian cabbage. They really do enjoy that as well. And then I sprinkle in some fish flakes for them. But yeah, they do love their oak leaves. That seems to be one of their preferred um, one of their preferred leaf litters, and then also magnolia. This is the more moist side. So they do kind of like to have some drier areas, right? I sort of leave this side a lot wetter, and this side was a bit drier. That seems to be doing the best for them. Gently move the leaves. And allow me to say that I don't normally invade their enclosure too much just to kind of get a nice video for you so there you can see there's a whole bunch more and like I said they are just really doing well look how wide these animals are they're really really cool looking isopod it's like the Porcilia warnery I really would love to get my hands on those at some point awesome so guys, uh, there you have it. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. 
I plan to make more isopod content because, you know, my collection's growing rather large and there isn't a whole lot of content out there about these incredible animals and they really are growing in popularity in the captive trade. So I think it'd be really cool to show you guys more of them. Let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like to see some care videos and tutorials or what you'd like to see with regards to isopods. Thanks so much for watching the video guys. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe down below here. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked my stupid joke before <laughs> or if you just love the isopods as much as I do. And I really look forward to seeing you guys in a video again quite soon. Thanks so much for watching again. See you guys. Take care.